Good day to everyone, especially with man. Um, so today we will talk about the world of ideas. Under this, that there are two topics of world of ideas. But for today, we will focus on the global media cultures wherein na ating mapag-iusapan for today. So um, the second coverage ay madidiscuss siya ng next presenter after me that he talks about the globalizations. Um, of religion which under of this media. So before we move in our main agenda that um, okay. Ayan. Um, that we expect in the end of these topics our inter intended learning outcomes or ILOs na may tap na tayo mapag-uusapan. First is the global media cultures which are explores the relationship between the media culture and globalization. Then, the second is the globalization and media, that is the worldwide integrations of media through the cross-cultural uh, exchange of ideas, while technological globalization refers to cross-cultural development and exchange of technology, so isen sa matatalakay. And the last is the five time periods in the study of globalizations, and media. So, kumbaga, matatalakay natin dito ang mga history na kung, pa, kung saan ay nagkakaroon ng mga globalization in relations of media. So, dito makikita natin at malalaman natin na ang five time periods kung paano nagkaroon ng mga market integrations, mga organizations in between of countries and yung mga international organizations in which can help to grow the country. So, Dito, matatalakin natin yung limang yun. Then, okay. Um, the global media cultures, that is the first term no, that we can see in the particular destinations. So, the global media cultures, well, um, globalization and identity, globalization and human rights, um, globalization and culture, or globalization of anti-retoritism, uh, um, are some concepts related to the study of globalizations by many scholars. So, among this concept, the one that offer is especially insight is a globalization and media, diba? When we heard the media, that's related to um, to other than technology. Kung ating naalala noong midterm natin na nabanggit ni ma'am, ang the general concept of, of globalizations where in natalaki natin na one principal or driver of globalization is technology. Iba tatlo ang nabanggit ni Ma'am noon. So, economic life is dramatically transformed by advancement in information of technology. So, why is there a need to recall that um, idea? That is because it is related to our discussion right now. We will talk about the global media culture, the, the media. Okay, so, now, the media is very important impact on cultural globalization into um, mutually interdependent ways. Alam naman natin na the media is provide an extensive transnational missions uh, of cultural products and pangalawa ay media contribute information of communicative networks and social structures that is the global media cultures. Okay. Um, the global media cultures, situation and created through globalization and media, make people conceive they belong to one world called global village. A term coined by Marshall McLuhan in early 1980s, a Canadian media theorist, to express the idea that people throughout the world are interconnected through the use of new media technology. So, Pakikita natin dito, uh, may term na global village. So, punta na agad tayo sa global village na ayon kay Marshall Makluha. So, sabi nga dito is to express the idea that people throughout the world are interconnected through the use of new media technology. So, ayun ang sinasabing global village. Halimbawa, so, ang nakalagay nga rin, interconnected through the use of new media technology. So, Kahit anumang panik tayo ng bansa or panik ng daigdig, I mean, um, maaari pa rin tayo makipag-communicate through the use of our 
uh, ARM devices, yung ating internet. So, through the use of social media, so under ng media, yun nga, meron tayong television, radio, digital media, or the mga social media. So, later on, we will make it clear kung ano yung mga classification of those. Um, ano, um, na ating sinasabi. So, um, we, ang idea na sinasabi ng Global Village ay to express the, the idea that people throughout the world are interconnected. So, saan mang panit tayo ng daigdig, um, interconnected pa rin through the use of new media technologies. Alam naman natin na noong una ay pasya pa na noon na, na mag-relay ng information or mag-relay ng message comparing now, no? So, ayan. Um, okay, ne next is according to scholars, the world is global globalized in the 1900s upon the advancement of media and transportation technology. So, ito yung pinaka-may na nangyari. O sabihin natin, um, sa part of globalization, if we have the advancement of media and transportation technology. So, yung pagpunta-punta sa iba't sa iba ibang lugar, ano, yung, um, yung transportation technology using um, vehicles, buses, or kung ano man sasakyan, yung common na airplane, ano, ay isa ay sa ibang bansa yun. So now, ayun yung pinakang common, or sabihin natin, nagkaroon ng part of globalization. During 1900s, yung pinakang focus, uh, advancement of media, plus and transportation technology. Sabi, um, changes in migration patterns where people move easily and advancement in media which brought changes to human life. Life heightened globalization. So actually, we'll talk about this. Ano, yung advancement na sinasabi na advancement in media at saka yung sinasabi natin epekto nito sa atin as a whole um, sa ating buong mundo or sa buong daigdig. Kaya nga, globalization. So now, as a process, globalization works silently for millennia without having um, been given a name as a trend it had uh, been with us since the beginning of history and further argued that a uh, multitude of um, thread connect us <clears throat> far away places from an ancient time. So, ayan. Now, may tinatawag tayo na global media dahil sa pagbabago ay nagiging mabilis din ang ikot o kilos ng advancement in media na nagdadala sa buhay ng tao para pagkakaroon ng uh, globalization. So, sabi, uh, global, uh, a global media culture create a continuous cultural exchange in which crucial aspects such as identity, nationality, religion, behavioral norms, and way of life are continuous question and challenge. Um, so this cultural encounter or involve the meaning of cultures with the different socioeconomic base, typically a transnational and commercial cultural industry on one side on a national public regulated cultural industry on the uh, other part. So sabi nga dito, global media cultures create a continuous cultural exchange in which crucial aspects such as identity, the nationality, religion, behavior norms, and way of life are continuous question and challenge. So ito yung uh, sinasabi natin mga, for example, pan uh, panonood, uh, panonood natin ng TV or yung mga movies, I mean, um, specifically movie pala, wherein uh, na marami mga Pinoy na nanonood ng drama or what dra kay, uh, drama na galing ibang bansa, so, in this, papasok dito yung tinatawag natin global media cultures na para bang ang dating uh, masasabi natin, ah, nai-interject natin yung karakteristik ng ibang bansa. That is because uh, na tayo mismo nagpa-participate, ano, in a way na nanonood tayo, ano, na para bang ang, uh, yun nga, nanonood uh, na interject natin yung karas, karakteristik na para bang ganun yung idea. So, sa pamamagitan ng k-drama at saka yung ibang uh, iba't ibang related na gano'n, that is why nakalagay dito na global mutuals create a continuous cultural exchange. So, nagpapalitan 
the same as nga doon sa Korea na may Koreana na no, ng ibang, uh, kumbaga ng ibang cultures, ng ibang tagaibang bansa, nakakaiba para sa kanila. In a way, the same din na nangyayari na nagkakaroon ng cultural exchange. Maaring na project nila o na ini-introject nila ang karakteristik or race or values ng um, galing sa ibang bansa. So, sa pamamagitan ng panonood, a uh, panonood or sa pakikipag-communicate, so, to the use of media, kaya nga sinasabi dito na the global media cultures. No? So, ayan. Then, sabi, um, okay. Um, the global uh, media cultures has a lot of defin definition. But I guess, uh, the uh, the uh, for our topics for today, that this definition, it would be really one of summarized. So, sabi nga dito, media cultures refers to culture created under the influence of mass media. The concept of media culture refers in first its impact on society's uh, information consumptions and intellectual guidance. Media culture tends to be a major factor in the information of mainstreaming culture since it affects society's opinions, values, tastes, attitudes, and informational availability. So, ang sinasabi lang naman dito is, yung media ay mayroong influence like what I said, I said kanina lamang na kung paano ba natin uh, maaring mga uh, tinitingnan ang mga maraming mga bagay dito sa ating society. Maraming, maaring ang media ang nag-influence ng ating mga opinion, uh, ng ating paniniwala tungkol sa mga bagay at ng ating mga attitude. Um, ito ay nagiging bahagi din ng media ng information, yung pagpuo na kung ano ba ang gusto natin, kung ano ba yung binavalue natin, kung ano, yung, uh, um, kung ano ba yung mahalaga sa atin. Uh, and um, dahil sa kinoconsume natin yung information na ito, and through the media, ay nag-evolve nag at nagkakaroon ng, um, ng iba't ibang pananaw. Most especially, especially kung ito ay binangga natin sa globalization. Kasi, um, Dahil sa globalization, tayo bilang mamamayan ay nakapag-consume tayo ng iba't ibang information na hindi lamang mula sa ibang bansa, not only the domestic source or um, sa local source, kundi international source. And with the picture, sabay din natin ito ang globalization. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> Globalization and media. Okay. Globalization and media. Okay. 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 Uh, okay. Um, globalization with refers to economic and political integration on a world scale has a crucial cultural dimension in which the media has to set the role, I mean, when we started the contemporary world, that we are defined the world uh, globalization, diba? we mentioned about interconnectedness and um, interdependent of nation state of different countries to one another. And usually, ang definition of globalization, we focus on the economic sites and political integration, diba? market integration, international trade pero um sa pagtingin natin sa globalization ay may mahalagang parte ang um, kultura o may dimension o bahagi ng kultura then kung ating babalikan ng ating lesson nung una kay ma'am with regards to globalization na one principal driver of globalization is technology technologies i mean so kabilang na doon of course yung media um Interrelated naman doon yung technology at saka yung media. So, ang sinasabi dito ay crucial cultural dimension in which the media has the central role. So, kung baga, yan ang gumugugol sa atin culturally. Mas sabi natin na pinaka uh, matindi na nagkaroon ng influensya yung media. You no know, Globalization and media now. And uh, dito na sinasabi natin ang um, globalization and media so, global institution like the media has an impact upon the structure and process, processes of the nation state, including 
uh, international cultures. Okay, next. In that sense, media globalization is about how most national media systems can become more internationalized, becoming more of open to outside influence, both in their content and in their um, ownership and control. So, ayan, ano, ang nakalagay sa globalization, ang media, so, global media is support the creations of new communities. So, the internet, for example, not only facilitate communication across the globe, but also support formation of new social communities in which members can interact with each other. So, dahil sa globalization, may kakaroon ng integration of ideas na maging bukas sa ibang bansa na nagkaroon, ah, na magkaroon ng new ideas on how uh, mapapaunlad ng isang state. So, kumbaga, this media is part of giving a chance or opportunities to become more internationalized. Uh, we know naman na that media has a big influence in our daily lives. Na nakaka-influence sa atin. So, dito nabubuo o nagpupukas ang new roadmap ng decisions making as becoming more internationalized. Then, think of it. Think of um, the media. When we meet, uh, when uh, uh, we uh, meet at this point, um, tingnan natin yung um, na dito sa ating bansa ay yung mga company sa mga nagpo-produce ng iba't ibang media. Balita, halimbawa, they have become more internationalized kasi hindi lang ang binabalita natin dito ay nangyayari sa ating bansa. Uh, mayroon, uh, mayroon nga tayong news organization na originally na sila ay mula sa western country na mayroon sila dito na local base, national base and uh, mayroon din dito yung mga offices of this outlet. So, kung titingnan natin ang media ay yung mga news organization ay talaga, it has become more open to outside influence influence both their content and in their ownership and control ng mga kamp kumpanyang ito. So, dahil sa globalization again, we become more interconnected and we do not only consume the media. That is um, the information that consume or produce in our country but more so yung mga pinoproduce sa iba't ibang bansa. So, sabi, oh, okay, yun nga, no? na mayroong parte talaga ang media pagdating sa globalization. Okay, we are in the last five time um, five, uh, five time periods in the study of globalization and media. So, tinitingnan dito yung parang nasabi nating historical period, ano, na parang de development ng sinasabi nating media in chronological Order that is uh, articulated by Jack Wolf 2014 that based on him na ito yung limang era. So, una, di ba? Okay. Oral, <clears throat> oral communication. Of all forms of media, human speech in the oldest and most enduring. Ito yung um, the oral communication is the human speech na ito na yung pinakamatanda at enduring. Kapag kasi natin sinabi, enduring, um, long lasting, ever since nandiyan na. Sabi, humans are allowed to cooperate and communicate through language. Uh, our language, you know, languages as a means to develop the ability to communicate across culture are the lifeline of globalization. No? Sabi, um, okay, the language contributes to the form, to the formations of culture. Language is in a sense that the substance of cultures. Ito yung napakahigang bahagi ng kultura. Ang ah, nasinasabi pa na ang wika ay this is the symbol of group belonging, enabling different groups of people to know what ethnic groups they belong to and what common heritage they share. So, kumbaga, kapag tayo o ikaw nagsasalita ng Pilipino, 
that we are or you are um, able to distinguish you as someone from Asia, as someone from Southeast Asia, and then in particular as someone from Philippines, when you speak um, um, Portuguese, do you able to identify agad-agad that that person is from Portug Portugal lang? Hindi, di ba? Because there are certain country na nagsasalita ng Portuguese, especially, limbawa na sa South America, because Portugal um, colonized them for a long time in um, in the past. So, um, ayun, so nalaman natin na through the, through the language kung ano yung common heritage they share. Di ba? In the last lectures, di ma'am, sa atin na American and British English ay nakita natin yung pagkakapare-pareho nagkakahalihalin tulad ng mga accents or language ng both countries. So, ibig sabihin yung heritage, yung pinagmulan, and yung linya ng mga isang pamilya ng isang language here in the Asia, that na nagmula, or, or pwede natin sabihin na nagmula sa, ibang, sa isang mother tongue, in which isa yun nga sa uh, Austro-Russian language, kasama na doon yung ating salita or wika na ginagamit na dito sa ating bansa. At ang sabi pa ng scholars na kung walang language ay mawawala ang cultural identity natin mga tao regardless kung saan ka mong bansa. Sabi dito, without language, people would lose their cultural identity. That is by Del Humo 2011. And that is the first era ng development ng globalization. Basta, titin na lang natin na sabi, pag wala daw language, mawawala ang cultural identity ng, uh, ng isang state. Okay. Yan lang ating titin niya. Ah, okay. Uh -huh. So, this the trivia according to Ethnologue. Ethnologue is the research, um, research siya ng languages. Currently, mayroon 7,770 languages spoke in the whole world today. And roughly, 40% of languages are now endangered. Often, with less than 1,000 speakers remaining. Meaning, uh, meanwhile, just 23 languages account for more than half the world population. No. Uh, namamatay ba language? Languages? Yes. Namamatay ang language. Kailan namamatay ang language? Pag wala na nagsasalita, nagsasalita nito. Kaya ang, ang mahalaga na patuloy pa rin na. Ang language ay, kasi ay very dynamic. Kumbaga, nagbabago ito, nagbabago ng forma and lagi tayong may natututunan. And the Filipino language has a girl being. And sa maraming mga taon, nagkakaroon ng version, di ba? Meron tayong islang. And dati na uso ang Jejemon and the certain group dynamic kasi. Limbaw, English. Kung, uh, mababasa, kung magbabasa tayo ng uh, old English, hindi natin siya kayang basahin comparing now. So, sabi, language is as the dynamic. Pag sinabi natin dynamic, ay um, nagbabago-bago ng maybe a forma, who is, or the pronunciation. Okay, number two is script. Uh, when we talk about the script, hindi ito yung script na movies and drama. This script is talk about the writings. Writing is humankind's principal technology for collecting, manipulating, storing, retrieving, communicating, and disseminating information. Writing may have been invented in independent of three times in different parts of the world. World, I mean, in the Near East, China, and Mesoamerica, writing in a system of graphic marks representing units of a specific language, uniform, and in the other country like American, British accents, and have been different pronunciation of uniform. Uniform, I mean, but I would prefer uniform. Uniform is created in Meso. Potamia present day Iraq na kung saan nasa Iraq ngayon. In the only writing system which can be traced to its earliest prehistoric, prehistoric 
origin that is according to Besera 2014. Um, form, ano ba yung una? Um, unang forms writing. So, ano ba yung form ng writing natin? Diba? Gumagamit tayo ng alphabet. And, but, ano yung early? Early ng forms of um, writing. Um, nakalagay dito kung mapapansin natin. It's earliest prehistoric origin. Ito ang meron tayong uh, iba na kapag sinabi ng ating earliest prehistoric origin yung mga ano um hindi lamang basta sa unang panahon kundi ang um, panahon na parang ang idea ay ang mga tao ay naguukit ano sa kweba nagsusulat sila sa pamamagitan ng pag-uukit sa kweba or something like that pero related lang siya sa cave paintings pero syempre makikita natin yung mga pag-uukit sa kweba na different na salita ano during that time so sabi nga um syempre wala pang papel noon may lang naman ang uso ang papel and writing is the uh, malaki ang ambag pagdating sa globalizations ano so sabi ayan cuneiform script looks like that this photo of university of Ac oxford i mean and um it is a written like wedges May mga wedge yung baga, parang um, potato wedge. Diba? Parang triangular shape. Kung makikita natin sa may upper and central part, ay these are wedges. Hanggang um, sa true evolution ay nagpe-prepare na the ancestors in Mesopotamia to move into alphabet and nag-let go na sila into uniform script. Ito ay... Um, Clay. So, habang malambot ang clay, ay dito niya yung sinusulat. So, kumbaga, parang palayok. Clay pot, ba? Diba? So, isinulat nila dito, nila doon yung kanilang script na. Uh, per, actually, ang nakakabasa lang ng clinical script yung mga scholars. <clears throat> okay. The Philippine script and origin. So, makikita natin dyan na hindi talaga alphabet ang ating script. Um, may nauna pa. Uh, this is the Philippine script and origin. This forms Odyssey, Nature, Culture, People. So, ayan nga, marami yung script. May baybayin, haninuo, buhid, uh, tagbanwa. Okay, hindi ko na masyadong palalawakan. Okay. A script, humans communicating shared knowledge and ideas through a script. The very first writing, the origin of writing was in the form of carving such as wood, stone, bones, and others. The media that is through, that through humans to globalization what the, uh, was the script of ancient Egyptian written in papyrus plan. Ito yung kumbaga dahon nito. Papyrus is doon nagsisulat ng mga sinuang tao talaga. So, wala pang papel noon. Siyempre naman. Binabakat sa papyrus using the reed and um, pen para makukit yung certain letters na sangayon sa kanilang alphabet. So, sabi, written and orderly arrangement of um, Document pertaining to religious, cultural, economic, and religious practices or done through script for dissemination to other places. So, uh, ito kasi yung papyrus na ito, actually, pinaka-common pala siya sa mga religious practices in which yung kasulatan. So, actually, may mga scriptures na banal na kasulatan na isinulat sa papyrus during that time. Malimbawa, during that time. Uh, of Apostle Paul, kung ako nagkakamali, ano, na parang idea, um, sinusulat yung mga word of God through um, plan. So, inuukit doon yung words na gusto ma-release, uh, yung uh, mga message through that ano, papyrus. And, in example ko lang siya, kumbaga, pinagsama para makabuo ng word of group of words na salita, written or daily. Okay, the uh, script. Okay, the, the number three, the printing press. The printing press is a device that allows for the mass production of communication, uh, of 
uniform, I mean, printed matter, mainly text in the form of books, pamphlets, and newspaper. Ito na yung, syempre, yung uh, mga piniprint, ano, yung makikita natin sa libro na newspaper at kahit saan naman na using printer, it reviewed, uh, revolutionized in, in China where it was created. So, mga Chinese ang una nagprinta ng uh, nag-invento ng printing. So, yun. Uh -huh. Okay. So, ito yung ex diamond Sutra from Tang Dynasty, China, 18, uh, 868 AD. Pag sinabi natin AD, uh, without kakamala, ano to, minay. British Museum, which is widely seen as the earliest existing printed book. Ito na yung pinakamaaga na printed book na naitala noon. So, noon pa lamang 868 AD ang ay ang China ay nagkaroon na ng technology sa pag-print at um, ito yung nag, uh, naging mahalaga dahil mas madali silang nakapag-produce ng mga bas babasahin. I think na patungkol ito sa relihiyon o mga panahon na ito. So, hindi ko naman saan palalawakan. Okay. <clears throat> Johannes Cottenberg further developed the printing press in the 15th century with his invention of the cotton birch press. So, dahil dito, naging mabilis yung pag-print ng printing press. Naging mura. And yung production ay naging mas mabilis yung nakipag-produce. No? Ano makapag-produce sa mga libro? And, uh, at ibang-ibang sulatin. At naitala ang experience yung mga knowledge ng ating mundo. Diba? Lagi nitong, lagi natin gusto na naitala o isulat yung mga Mahalaga nangyayari kaalaman, information, balita, at dahil sa cut press, ay nagawa natin yon So, kumbaga, ito yung nag-revolutionize uh, uh, nag ng uh, makabagong printing press. And ngayon, then sabi, ngayon, ha, okay, may consequences pagdating sa printing press. Ano yon Na ayon kay um, Eisenstein 1917. The following or the consequences of um, the printing press. Number one, the printing press changed the very natures of knowledge. It preserved knowledge which had been it more malleable in oral cultures. It also standardized knowledge. So, bakit? Kasi nga, diba, kapag ka oral communication na maaaring mag -iba pa yung iyong sinasabi, diba? May mga pagkakataon na, for example, nakipag-usap tayo and then biglang nag-iiba yung parang tinik or parang direction na sinasabi na parang gano'n na hindi organized or hindi talaga consistent. Whereas kapag ka dito na papasok sa printing press in which talaga naka-organize na siya. So kung anong nakasaad sa text ay of course, ayun yung, uh, so wala nang pagbabago na parang gano'n yung idea. No? Dahil sa printing press, na pe-preserve yung dating languages, the way of their sentences, the information na meron doon. Ibig sabi na pe-preserve. The, the number two is a friend encourage the challenge of political and religious authority because of its ability to circulate competing views. Uh, printing press encourage the literacy of public and growth of its voices. And dahil sa printing press, ay madami na i-produce ng mga sulati, lathalain, balita, etc. At dahil doon, um, um, na-challenge ngayon yung political or religious authority. So, kung babalikan natin yung history ng ating bansa, um, ang panulat ni Dr. Sarisal at yung ang um, iba pa natin mga kinikilalang bayani, ang nag-challenge sa authority ng Spain, like Las Laridad uh, Lari and Noli Metangri El Tuli. At dahil sa naiprinta ito at naikalat ito sa mga target na magbabasa, ay napaiting nito ang damdamin ng mga Pilipino na makibaka para sa kalayaan. So, ayun yung sinasabi dito sa second part nito. At dahil sa tulo ng printing fest, ay mas um, naging open at nagkaroon ng views kasi kasi nung wala pa itong uh, 
ang uh, magsasabi lang ng view ay ang higher authority, di ba na ito lang yung pag-aralan mo, ito lang yung pakinggan mo. And, and noon, nagkaroon na tayo ng ability na maisulat ko ang mga other views because of the ability to print ay napaka- uh, ini-involve ini, um, ito. And yun nga, pas nagkaroon ng kaalaman ng publiko at kalaunan ay nag-grow na yung mga um, um, diba? stakeholders. Okay, the manuscript of Pigeta. So, oh she, so, Sino nga ba si Piketa? If we still a member of our history, last person, siya yung writer or tagasulat ni um, Ferdinand Magellan. Yung nag-voyage, voyage I mean, sila around the world. Ngayon, uh, yung journal ni Piketa, uh, kumbaga, ang winner ng Pilipinas sa para malaman na kung ano ba ang nakita niya noong panahon na dumaan sila dito sa Pilipinas kasi uh, Dinescribe ni Pigapeta doon ang kasuutan ng mga Pilipino and mga language na kanya narinig and even na may drawing pa na mapa. So, um, ang original manuscript ni Pigapeta is based on the article sa basa ko ay nasa iba't ibang mga museum sa US, Italy, France, pero dito sa Pilipinas meron na tayong digital copy nito sa National Historical of the Philippines. So, sa mga may hilig sa history. Dahil nga sa panahon kasi ngayon, um, talagang dinodocument na foreign diary. And ang um, experiences at ito din, uh, nung inilathala ito, nang pinakita ito sa hari at rina noong mga panahon na iyon, ha, para may encourage pa yung mga uh, pagpapadala ng mga voyage, mga bangka, mga barko, and para sa paglibot sa buong mundo. So again, that's a topic uh, uh, <coughs> of printing press na kung paano niya pinago yung ating uh, word of ideas in relation to globalizations. Okay. Uh, wait lang, hindi lang ako. Takda na muna ako. Sorry for the interruption. Sumasakit kasi yun. Okay, the number four is the electronic media. That refers to broadcast or a storage media that take advantage of electronic technology. So, electronic and um, electricity gumagamit ang kuryente include um, television, radio, internet, pack, CD-ROMs, DVD, and any, any other media that requires electricity or digital encoding of information. So, Ayun ang pinakambahagi ng electronic media. We know naman na media, it has something na, uh, not something, I mean, it gives information to deliver in the viewers or listeners. Sabi nga, encoding of information, di ba nga, media is use of electricity. Electricity, I mean. So, para magamit natin, without electricity, of course, walang information malalaman ng public sa so, mga kaganapan. Media provides the ideas in decisions making, especially to express the ideas of someone, even viewers and personals. Electronic media is one of the ways to have um, globalization dahil na ipakalat ang mga world of ideas dahil dyan, um, alam naman natin ang pinakansikat na media which is the okay Okay, ito, Evolutions of Televisions. Okay, from the 1930s, 2010, and di ba nga, ngayong generation natin, mas gumipis pa yan, and uh, manggan sa nag-evolve na ito, na parang box lang dati, tapos parang nagkaroon ng tube, ito, 2000s, may mga tube yan sa likod, mabigat yan, then 2010, ay panipis ang panipis hanggang ngayon na may blended na TV at sobrang lalaki na ng high definition. The main points lang naman dito na isip ko ay um, kumbaga these parts of globalization dahil sa world of ideas may bago at may naluluma. Now which is much more innovative and most lesson to handle. So what do we think of future television just make up? So ano, 
na nagpakaya yung fusion ng televisions through which of influ influence and of because of globalization is a um, ano pwede natin itanong ay uh, do we think TV will be um, out of this style for future and hindi na tayo manonood sa TV at sa mga cellphone siya lang, di ba? Ngayon, tulad na may TV Plus, pwede tayo manonood sa cellphone yung TV Plus na sinasaksak sa USB. Ako, meron ko doon sa TV. <clears throat> okay. Electronic media in the nineteen, I'm sorry, in the twentieth century, the only available mass media in the remote villages was the radio, while film was soon developed as an artistic medium for great cultural. Cultural expression, the most powerful and per. Basic mass media is television as it brought the visual and oral power of film with the accessibility of radio. The, in the introduction of television was the defining moment in globalization. Lul, very well. Kasi, <clears throat> kahit, kasi kahit nasa bahay lang tayo, eh, nakikita natin yung um, nangyayari sa iba't ibang bansa na Nakikita natin yung ganito pala yung kinakain doon, ganito pala yung buhay doon, and kahit naman ngayon, because of television, we are able to travel to abroad to see of what life they have there, kahit naman hindi tayo pumunta. It was defining the moment of globalization. Uh, the interconnectedness ng mga tao sa mundo, that's an electronic media. You know naman, nagkaano nakaka-influence ang electronic media in our daily lives at paano natin nalalaman ang mga cultural identity ng isang bansa dahil yun yung mga napapanood natin nakikita natin yung the way of their lives um, their cultures and their disciplines nabibigla na lang tayo na ganun pala yung nangyayari sa ibang bansa yun. like sa North America ah, I know, sorry, North Korea diba? dahil sa media nalalaman natin na para bang nakulong ang mga mamamayan o tao sa North Korea, wala silang democracy or freedom to travel in abroad. Then, di na nila alam na more on advanced na ang tao ngayon. So, because of the media, they are able to deliver the information sa atin. So, that's an electronic electronic widget, the power full of world ideas. Okay. <clears throat> On ongoing globalization processes such as economic, political, and cultural are revolutionized by a host of new media in the beginning of the 19th century, di ba? Kapag sinabi 19th century is 1800 to 1900. So ngayon, dyan, nagsisimula ang pag-uspong. Sabi natin, baka bagong media, yan na yung na nabanggit natin ilin, electronic media. This electronic media is, the, is in the likes of telegraph, telephone, radio, film, and television continuously open up new perspective of globalization. Um, um, nung una ay telegraph pa lang, ano, sa pakipag-communicate, use it telegraph na talagang napakaluma niya na. Kung mapapansin natin sa pakipag-communicate dito sa telegraph, in which, yun nga, Kung hindi ako nagkakamali, ang telegraph ay parang itsurang torotot, something like that. Uh, mukhang tampet, I mean, or mukhang shell, in which to nagsasita, that's something like that. So, ayan, telegraph. Then, telephone is when we recall back that telephone is discovered by Alexander Graham Bell. Then, radio, film, and television, sabi is continuously open up new perspective television. Globalization, so meaning to say that this electronic media is a way to open up further ideas in relations of globalization. So ito ang mga another ways of benefits kung paano nakakaroon ng mga globalization sa isang bansa dahil sa interconnectedness. Nalalaman ng mga kailusang panday, big or bansa ng, ibang, ng isang bansa, I mean. So, um, nakakaroon o pumapasok ang ideas integrations between in an another country 
para sa pagbubukas ng another ways of globalization in their country kung ano yung dapat improve at proyekto na dapat gawin. Okay, in the 19th century, 20th century, the only available mass media in remote villages was the radio while film was soon developed as an artistic medium for great cultural expression. So, during that time, the 1900s, pataas ito daw ay the only available mass media sa sinasabi natin in remote villages was the radio. Very common ito during that time. Diba? Pakikinig ang radio kasi nga wala pang visual, wala pang television. So, audio lang mismo kaya nga radio din. Ang nakalagay dito ay wild film. So, nakasama, kasama na doon yung um, visual. Was soon, okay, from the word itself, was soon developed as an artistic medium for great cultural expression. So, ibig sabihin, ay sinunod na itong film to express their cultures in the country. So, dito nagkakaroon na or nag start na ang idea sa so, pagbubukas ng globalization. So, um, okay, then, Okay, the last one is the digital media. Okay, phones, phones and televisions are now considered digital while computer, computer is considered the most important media. Influencing globalization. So, ayan, di ba na masasabi natin television at um, cellphone na masasabi natin pangalawa. Pero ang panguna talaga ay internet na. Kasi we know naman na kapag may internet na access natin information na hinahanap natin isang click lang, isang type, those topics ay agad-agad lumalabas. Then, papapasok natin yung ideas ng isang bansa through their blogs. Then, computers give access to global and marketplace and transform cultural life. So, sa ganun na lamang um, sa mga struck markets, sa panong una na talaga manual, Uh, manual ang um, sabi nating mga information, yung mga data na inilalabas, comparing now na computerized na automatic magpapapap na sa ating screens, yung mga trends, yung mga exchanges at um, different countries. Ano, ano yung foreign exchanges ba yung tinatawag doon? So, that is the computer na nasa makabagong panahon na tayo. Ang, uh, ah, ang sabi nga dito is considered the most important in media influencing globalization dahil nga sa, dahil ang computer say nandyan na ang, ang mga halos information, mga reveals information, even mga secrets ng isang bansa ay na reveal na sa website. So, doon nagkakaroon ng idea sa bansa for globalization to grow their country. So, kung hindi man matalaki sa TV, radio, or films yung mga details sa isang bansa kung paano ito umangat, eh, uh, aha, ay may ways para uh, pa, para malaman uh, mga secrets or ways sa isang country. So, sa pag-usbong na kanilang bansa, that is the word of ideas sa tinatawag natin sa topics kung ito. O natin, I mean, kung baga, Maraming ways na kaalaman to have interconnectedness and interdependent to grow the countries. Computers, sub, uh, uh, computers is the spread of ideas, information. Okay. Our daily life is revolutionized by digital media. People are able to adapt and adapt new practices like fashion, sports, music, foods, and many others through access of information provided by, uh, by computers. They also exchange ideas, establish um, relations and linkage through the use of Skype, Google, Chat, and Zoom. So, binago niya talaga ang ating um, personal cultural life, especially now. And pandemic, we are listening the lectures in this our Google Meet, Google Zoom, etc. And this, uh, in which, na hindi naman natin naisip dati, and it's possible pala. Our homes become our school. And because of the media or digital media, uh, we are able to do that. It, it, paano kaya kung tayo ay walang pang pandemic, ah, wala pang media in, in this time of pandemic, What we do, we do in the in globalization, media has a big influence dahil sa digital media may mga connectedness sa other um, countries which have daily changes in our daily life. 
nalalaman natin uh, um, ano pa ba? Uh, nalalaman natin kung ano yung bago o yung pagbabago sa ibang bansa. Ang sabi nito, people are able to adapt and adapt. So, magkaiba itong dalawa. For me, uh, di ba, kapag sinabi natin adapt with the letter O, parang ang ito ay ina-embrace natin. Whereas, pagka-adapt with letter A, na para bang nag adjust na tayo. Then, sabi, new practices like passion, sports, music, food, and many others through access of information provided by computers. Um, ito yung, ito nga yung ini-introject na natin yung culture, cultures ng ibang bansa, like their passions or, or, or etc. which through the computers. So, nakita natin yung power ng global, global digital media in our personal and for the globalization. Dahil mas napabilis ang um, exchanges ng messages messages between two countries unlike noon na need na mag-travel o mag-sulat para mag mapag, magpadal, ah, makapagpadala ng message. Kaya sa digital media ay napabilis ang growth ng countries. Until now, mas napapabilis pa through the innovation. Through the innovation. Okay. That is the five period na mahalaga sa study of globalization in the media. Una, Oral communication. The second, the script. Then third, printing press. The fourth, electronic media. And the last in this, the digital media. Okay. Uh -huh. This is the, my last topic for my presentation. Thank you for listening. And I hope you learn something from my presentation. And again, I'm the presenter from the PPT GFP. Um, 1B from uh, LSPU Santa Cruz campuses and I'm glad uh, na makapagsalita dito sa unang kay Paustal. Paus Paustal ka. And that's all for my presentation and thank you for listening.